Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome to a new video of Dollar Tree DIY home decor and room decor. These are all pretty much under the $5 mark. So they are easy, cheap, super affordable to make. Let me know down below which one of these is your favorite. I think my favorites tend to be like the planters and the candle holders or lantern idea. Yeah, I really like the lanterns. I also have a surprise for you guys later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and get started with our first Dollar Tree DIY. This is a super easy spring pillow DIY. I'm gonna fill up this white trash bag with all of these leftover um, plastic bags. I always save them when I get them in the store. So I opened up this roll of material and I did already iron it a little bit, but it was $1.25. I was so excited to find it in Dollar Tree. Now I took the shorter end and I folded it over and just hot glued it together just so I could get like a nice clean edge without like frayed material if that makes sense and then wrap this kind of up and around over that big bag of bags that you made and then just glue it together and this is going to actually become the long side of the pillow and then now we can take either end of the pillow and I basically folded the material in kind of like I was wrapping a gift and I just used my glue gun, my high heat glue gun and just pressed and held that together and you can also use something like you know some metal scissors or something to kind of press it and hold it if you don't want to use your fingers be careful doing this i definitely burned myself a couple of times if you have some kind of glove or like even the dollar tree sells those little fingertip covers the little silicone hot glue protectors for your fingertips press and hold this in place until the glue sets up and dries and then you have your pillow and the daisy one is so cute just as is but i did come in and do the exact same thing again with just a plain burlap here and I have another idea for it so we glued it together the exact same way and then took these little burlap flowers which I found in Dollar Tree for the first time actually they had two different packages of them so I did get a couple of each so that I could just mix and match I think there was um, maybe five flowers in each package, but I, I bought a few packages and then opened them up and just mix and match and I did have some flowers left over, but it was a fun way to just decorate this pillow really easy and you know, I think it's going to fit with a, any type of like farmhouse decor, boho decor, it's just kind of simple and rustic, it has a little country charm about it. So I have these outside and because we just have plastic on the inside of them so they make a really good recycle project or recycle craft idea and some fun spring decor and summer decor ideas. For this one we are taking a wooden wreath base from the crafters square in Dollar Tree and you could go ahead and spray paint this if you want. I'm just going to use some gold metallic paint by Deco Art, and then I took two of these wooden rectangle pieces of wood from the Dollar Tree. If you have a stain that you like go ahead and use that. Glue the wooden hoop in between those two wooden rectangles and create a base like that with a generous amount of hot glue. That's all there is to this one. Add your candle. Definitely recommend the LED candles. I will link this one down below. It's actually part of a tree trio set that can be used outdoors or indoors so it's perfect you can also set it on a timer if you want for the next one I found these little wooden boxes in Dollar Tree and we're actually gonna be using the wooden box and the wooden lid take the wooden lid off and place that just you know place it down on the table glue one of these wooden boxes right onto that take another box and stack it up on top of that one and then another lid again on top of that wooden box for that lid we're gonna flip it upside down so that it doesn't cover the the box it actually it's kind of rests on top and gives us a tiny box for the top, like a shallow box that we're gonna use as the top of our candle holder. So for this one, I did two boxes high, but I also did the next one and I went three boxes high. I think that you can go over them with a nice little wood stain. You could paint them, you could decorate them to fit with really any type of decor. They're very versatile. I cut out a piece of the little um, removable wall stickers that Dollar Tree sells and they had this little wood look one. So I cut that out and used it in inside of 
the little wooden squares at the top where I'm gonna be putting my candles. Now I found some little palm branches in Dollar Tree in their floral section and so I cut off a larger and a smaller little palm fern or no frond I think that's what you call it a palm frond I spray painted them gold and then I glued them onto the front and so they add this nice raised textured embellishment and just like a nice detail I feel like it brings out a very simple kind of modern coastal look but it would definitely really be able to be versatile and fit with different types of decor let me know if you guys would add the palm branch or not or if you would do something different to decorate this one what are your thoughts on it but all in all love how this came out and I have it styled in my bookshelf right now Now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm taking two of these little square wooden wall decor plaques. I had them left over from a craft I did back at Christmas time and I had painted them over. I took four wooden dowels, a generous amount of hot glue in each corner to stand up the wooden dowels and then glued the, the top piece on. I, I like the contrast with the wood and it also matches perfectly with these little wooden cutouts that Dollar Tree is carrying. I just glued on four wooden flowers across the top and bottom on each side. This is the lid from another one of those wooden boxes and it has this most beautiful butterfly cutout in the wood. I think it's so lovely. It adds like this extra layer to the top of your lantern. I think it makes it look more realistic. It gives it a little bit more size. It also gives you a place to neatly be able to attach like this little handle. I mean, this is really for looks. We are sticking with battery operated candles. We don't want any fires, so no real candles in here. Stick with the LED ones. I ended up deciding to actually add the bottom of that wooden box inside and just pop a candle right in there. And I think it's kind of interesting, kind of fun. Let me know if you think you like it better with or without that box down inside of the lantern. I was kind of undecided like if it was adding like a nice extra touch, a nice extra element with the different color contrast, or if I should just leave it out. I'm taking one of these laundry baskets from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut out about half of the little plastic bars on the side and we're gonna try to give this a little different look. I wanna create more of a blanket basket that I can use outdoors rather than like a laundry hamper, if that makes sense. So what I'm really cutting out of the basket is this section and this section. Basically then we have one here, one little bar, cut the next two, and then we have the next one. And then moving down, same thing except I don't only cut these two, I've decided to actually cut the neck, the middle bar here and the bottom two, turn it into this section where it's just a full wide open section. And then I spray painted the whole thing with a matte black spray paint. So I like the Rust-Oleum one that's for indoors and outdoors. It's also like a paint and primer mix, I think. So it adheres really well and it'll be great for using outdoors. So spray paint that. You can see now how the basket is looking and I think it looks pretty cool just like this. You could leave it like that and use it on your patio or somewhere outdoors just the way that it is. But I did want to take it a little step farther and cover those handles so I wrapped some nautical rope around them and then just used hot glue on either end to tuck in the ends of the rope and finish off the handle and then I wanted to actually give it kind of like a rope handle of its own not just cover the basket handle so I took another piece of the nautical rope on each end and I just like double knotted that underneath um, and then I made like a long loop for a handle and then on those knots, I actually just used hot glue so that that way it doesn't fray, it doesn't come undone and you'd be able to easily like pick up your basket like this. I guess they're more decorative than anything, but they are going to work if I want to pick up my basket of blankets. So this will be really cozy to keep outside.
For the next DIY, we're going to make some paper palms. I think these are so pretty for decorating with any time of year, really, but definitely for the summertime. I'm taking some paper to do this. I've got brown paper from Dollar Tree, but you could definitely reuse your Trader Joe's bags or any like paper grocery bags and simply make your palms out of that. So I'm taking kind of a rectangle or square and I leave the sides a little bit straight and then go up a few inches and then begin to curve and point in toward the top. So the best way to describe this is picturing kind of a triangle or a half, like a semicircle sitting on top of a rectangle. So that's kind of the best way, I guess, to describe this. So you can make these different shapes, like more rounded or more pointed at the top, totally up to you. But anyway, then you're gonna just take this piece and begin folding it over um, one way and then the other, one way and then the other again. Just keep going back and forth like this and basically fold it accordion style all the way across. I started out trying to make about half inch folds and somehow they seem to get wider as I go. I don't know what it is, but I have to be so careful. Just enjoy it. Have fun with this. You can maybe get the kids making them with you if you want. It's kind of like folding paper fans, basically. Now you could also cut down um, like V's down into the folds in the tops of the palms if you want to get more of like a pointed jagged edge so there's just multiple options here and at the bottom i used either hot glue or super glue gel i think i like the super glue gel the best i glued a little wood skewer stick in there to stand them up on and then i also trimmed this part here on the front and the back at the base of the paper fan palm leaf basically where we glued it together i just kind of tried to trim it in kind of gives it like more of a tapered look so it looks a little bit more like a natural palm leaf or palm branch once you stick these down inside your vase you don't really see that part so much and i just think this came out really really pretty i've been wanting to make these for a long time and i love how they look so for the next one i found these wooden i don't know what they are like these wooden paddle spatulas i guess in dollar tree and i decided to make some planter markers for the garden and it would be fun to really decorate these so i used a little bit of painter's tape to kind of block off sections and then i could use my rose gold paint and some white spray paint that i just already had left over from other projects so any colors that you like you can have fun with this um once the paint was dry so i have to say I feel like when I actually peeled off the painter's tape for what, I don't know if my painter's tape is getting old, but it, the, it wasn't sticking that well to the wood or I don't know if these wood or bamboo actually, I'm not positive, but it wasn't sticking super well. So I had a few little spots where the paint kind of leaked a little bit, but no worries. I ended up decorating that with a black oil-based Sharpie mark, permanent marker. And also I had a fabric paint, which I did a little bit of reading. And from what I can tell, fabric paint should hold up on wood and on a variety of materials. It's like a permanent fabric paint, so it should actually hold up on other materials. For now, it's looking super cute. I did some designs with leaves on here. If you wanted a free version for these, you could probably use painter sticks as well, but I'm so happy with them and I think they turned out really pretty. On to the next DIY. I'm taking a planter dish here. I guess it's like a little water catcher. I've got a hole drilled in the bottom of this little planter container from Dollar Tree and I have some of this aged copper paint spray paint so I'm going to use that and then I'm thinking of giving it a try adding on some of this bleached stone finish maybe I should actually try it on the cardboard first and find out okay so that is a very lovely color let's see what it looks like if we add some bleached stone on top of that Kind of weird. Maybe this is not what I want to do. I guess I should just go with this one, right? This is really pretty. Let's just do the aged copper and maybe just leave it at that. Once your planter dish is dry, you can add some marbles or stones. Dollar Tree has a variety of um, 
gemstones and river rocks that would be really beautiful. I almost forgot to come outside and give you an evening view of our little candle centerpiece arrangement and I just love how cool these look. I guess they're as close as you get to waterproof for an outside candle. So before I go to bed, I needed to come out here and share this with you guys. Look how awesome these look. Um, I think they came with a timer. Wow, so cozy and romantic out here with that flickering flame. Just super cozy for the evenings, for summer nights, sitting outside. I'm gonna see if I can put a link for them also down below in the description box because I think these are just, Wow, really stunning for your summer nights sitting outside. For this one, I'm now taking one of these pink vases. It's a glass jar vase from Dollar Tree. It basically has a raised pattern that reminds me of a giraffe. <laughs> so I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree spackle and what I wanted to do was actually fill in all around those raised patterns and make this look like a clay, like a tiled mosaic vase. It was a little trickier than I thought at first, just because I was having a little bit of a hard time making the spackle stick to the glass. My spackle was actually on the dry side, so I needed to add a little bit of water and get it to be a much creamier consistency so it wouldn't crumble so much. Then once that had a chance to fully dry, I came back with some sandpaper and just sanded everything really smooth. And then again, once that was done, <laughs> I took some Mod Podge and I'm using, I think this one was a gloss uh, Mod Podge. So I'm taking that one, coating the entire th vase and just sealing it off. You're gonna wanna let this like fully, fully dry. And it did take a little bit of time to dry, maybe a couple hours. Um, and then it was fully dry. And we can go ahead and get some flowers to put in here, be that real or artificial. This one is going to be a Pottery Barn inspired piece of decor. I am taking some air dry clay and basically rolling it into balls about maybe three quarters of an inch across or so, and then just gently kind of pressing them down to flatten them out a little bit so they look like a little cookie. And then I took a little wooden dowel and made a little hole in the center. So these actually kind of remind me of like the spearmints now, um, or the lifesaver mints. I think that's what they are. They remind me of like a little donut or a mint. You wanna kind of press all the edges just kind of very gently between your fingertips so that they kind of come a little bit to a point. Let them dry for quite a few hours on one side and then again, and the other. I recommend letting them dry overnight until they sound hollow and lightweight. And once you're pretty sure that these are all dry, you can go ahead and paint them. So I had this metallic copper paint and I thought this chalk paint would just be really pretty on here. You could also actually just leave them white if you want to, or you know, if you buy like a tan, um, air dry clay, that would be totally fine as well. So don't feel like you need to buy paint for this, but you can also use a paint from Dollar Tree or from Walmart. But once these are completely dry, I strung them up on some twine from Dollar Tree. I also made a large tassel to add at either end just by wrapping the twine very generously around and around and around on my hand and then when I had enough for how I wanted it, I gathered it all there at one end and tied a little knot and then all those other ends, I just trimmed all the loops so that they would hang freely and make like a nice tassel fringe. And here is how this one came out. I'm still deciding if I like it styled better somewhere on the bookshelf or maybe on the coffee table. But all in all, I feel like it's a really nice piece of decor that you can totally make on a budget. Let me know if you make this beaded rope, would you do the terracotta color or would you leave it more neutral? Now for the next one, I found these little flower coasters in Dollar Tree and I got the idea to make kind of like a, a wall art sign. I don't know if I'll hang mine on the wall or stand it up in the bookshelf, but basically I got a mat, uh, a frame, an 8x10 frame from Dollar Tree that already has some white matting in it, and I spray painted the frame with a kind of caramel color, a shade of tan, and then for the flowers I did two in 
a dark green spray paint and then two with the metallic gold let those dry and then we're going to make a backing for this so you can use any piece of paper i would definitely recommend checking like the scrapbooking papers in a craft store like michael's but whatever you would like to use you can also just find things in dollar tree to put as your background in here if you want a certain material or texture you could even use one of their placemats they sometimes have vinyl like textured placemats or even their contact paper i really like how it looks right now but i'm thinking that when i go to add my flowers on here i think i want it to have a little bit lighter background for a little bit more contrast. So whatever you want to be the background for this, you can cut to fit inside the frame and then just attach your green and gold flowers on here. And here is how this one cut turned out. I think the green and gold is a nice accent with kind of the colors that I have in my home right now. We are going to make some lovely candle holders or vases for spring and summer. These are going to be so beautiful for any kind of spring floral flower aesthetic. So if you've got any kind of wedding, baby shower, bridal shower, and you're looking for flowers, this is a beautiful option and DIY. I'm taking some pressed flowers. I ordered these on Amazon and I will link them down below. But if you want to press your own flowers, let me know if you've done it, how easy or difficult it is. I have never Actually, I think I did once when I was a child, but I don't have much experience with pressing my own flowers and drying them myself. So I ordered these on Amazon so I could go ahead and make this project, but I'm taking some dishwasher safe gloss Mod Podge and that'll make these water safe once they're dry. And you could use them as a vase or you could use them as a candle holder for some votive or tea light candles. I did a layer of Mod Podge and then a layer of the dried flowers, arranging them how I wanted. Everything besides the baby's breath worked out great. That was the only one where the stem was really stiff and it just wasn't bending nicely to stay on the glass, but everything else worked out really well. And then I did a second coat of Mod Podge on top. I love how this turned out. It's so beautiful. And my daughter actually wants to do kind of a Victorian glam and flower theme for her graduation party. So we're probably going to put these to use then. Let me know if that's something you guys would want to see, like a pink and gold flowers and glam party ideas. Um, I will be able to maybe film some of that later on this summer to put that video up for you guys if it's something you'd be interested in seeing. <music> Also make kindness rocks with your kids to leave outside and leave just in fun places for people to find by putting some of this um, dishwasher safe Mod Podge and the dried flowers on some of these rocks. So I also found these stones on Amazon because they're really smooth and round and like the perfect type of rock for this, but you could definitely find some outside and just make your own. For the next DIY, we're taking some of these Dollar Tree candles, and this is actually the Dollar Tree DIY that I have. So the other one, it would be really inexpensive because the vases were from Dollar Tree, but for this one, I picked up some paints and some candles from Dollar Tree. I've got the taper candles here. I'm using the white and the pink, and I just basically painted on here with some acrylic paint from the Dollar Tree and I did some flowers. I also did some lemons and some oranges and it was just really fun. I feel like it's so perfect for springtime or summertime, any, t any like spring or summer occasion that you might be hosting a dinner party or a brunch. These would be so lovely to have. And to be honest, they make really beautiful spring and summer home decor ideas as well, just to kind of set them on a shelf or on your dining table. They're really pretty and fun to make. For the next one, I found this nice little arched shape 
um, photo display piece. It has a little clip that you could hang up your picture and display it and I thought this was really cute and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it exactly but what I what I ended up deciding to do now for the spring because I've had this one for a few months and just kind of been sitting on it but I decided to paint it over and I would recommend just painting it in something like a chalk paint. Um, I did start with spray paint and I just wasn't that happy with how it was coming out so I ended up quickly brushing over it with some chalk paint anyway. Before you paint this you can simply take a tiny screwdriver and remove that little clip uh, clip that's in the middle take that out and that I would spray paint if you don't want it to be silver so I wanted metallic gold I just gave it a couple little quick sprays and then I also brushed on a little bit of more of like a tan caramel color just a little bit here and there to kind of dry brush and kind of just distress it on there a little bit I wanted to actually add some green leaf vining, which I thought I had a whole roll of it. Um, I, I think I have it linked to my Amazon storefront. However, since we moved, I, I thought I brought it with me, but I could not find it. So I started thinking about what I could use instead. And instead, what I did was actually use these little green pearl stickers and I wrapped those around the front and the sides and basically use stickers to kind of give it like a green vine effect. I also added in this other vine from Dollar Tree that has the little white berries on it. Last thing to do was print off some photos and I am actually having a hard time deciding what picture to put on here. My sister was here recently and we went to the zoo and got some cool pictures of the giraffes and a really unique bird. I don't know what this one is. Let me know if you know the name of this bird. So I've been trying to go like back and forth and see what pictures I should use on here and what I can kind of decorate with for spring. Now for this next DIY, I have one of these wooden block pieces. So to be honest, this one came from a set of wooden Jenga police pieces that I got a couple years ago that Five Below was selling. However, then I just have a few of them left, so I'm going to use one for this. But definitely check Dollar Tree. They have so many little like wood pieces and options for wood craft supplies, but I just wanted to use up something I already had so I brushed on some antique wax on here and then I had these three little pots so they come three in a pack and they're just like adorable little garden planter pots and they're super cute so I decided to paint those over with this kind of cream colored chalk paint and then while that's drying I'm also going to take these little heart picks so these are left from Valentine's Day but we are going to paint all of the red hearts green and then do all of the wooden toothpick stems in green paint as well. So I just had this nice soft light green chalk paint. I'm going to use that and then leave the pink and the gold hearts as is. So once this was all dry, I added a pink, gold, and green heart into each pot, just gluing the stem in with a little bit of hot glue and they look like adorable little heart flowers and I feel like this could actually work for Valentine's Day decor if you wanted it to, especially if you left that heart red. I think it makes the sweetest adorable little spring piece of decor and I think it's small enough that you could definitely add it into a tiered tray as well as like on a shelf or wherever you want to style this for your spring decor or your Easter decor this year. DIY is a vase that's inspired by this one I saw in at home. So I took a glass vase from Dollar Tree along with a single bouquet of some small cherry blossom flowers that I also picked up in Dollar Tree. Just pluck off those flowers, trim the back of the stem, and then glue them on around the neck of the vase. Then you can go ahead and spray paint the whole thing. And once it's dry, come back with some metallic finish acrylic paint, and you can touch up the edges of the flowers for a subtle bit of glam. And I just love how this looks. Plus the spray paint actually makes the flowers pretty stiff. So they kind of feel more like they're part of the vase and they don't even feel like fabric anymore. 
Moving on, we're taking one of these little wooden houses. I left the roof part the way it was and I just painted over the rest of the house with some white chalk paint. Once it was dry, I came back and added some gold rub-on transfer stickers also from Dollar Tree and I spelled out the little saying, a house is not a home without paw prints. You can totally spell out any little quote or saying that you want in here, but all of my fellow animal lovers out there, you know what I'm talking about. So you guys know I have two dogs. I would love if while you're watching, you would leave a comment down below or drop some emojis down there and share what kind of pets that you have. and jump right in with our first West Elm inspired DIY. These are gonna be Dollar Tree DIYs for the most part. You are gonna need two of these um, five, I think they're five and a half inch square pieces from the Dollar Tree. You'll also wanna get some of the wooden dowels, which I know Dollar Tree used to carry and I still have a bunch of them. So let me know if you guys still see them in the Dollar Tree or not, but if not, check Walmart. I am showing you guys four of them here. You're gonna actually need eight of these. Um, for the larger one and then I think four of them more for the small one. The first thing I wanted to do was kind of give these a little bit of a wood stain so this is totally optional but I took a little bit of some antique wax here and mixed it with a little bit of water and just kind of brushed that on and made kind of like my own light wood stain color here. I love how it turns out it's just like a light medium neutral brown. Now we're gonna need some plastic cutting board sheets and I have seen that Dollar Tree carries these as a two pack for $1.25. So if you can find them, definitely pick them up in Dollar Tree. But I went to two different Dollar Trees near me and they did not have them in stock. And I really wanted to make this to share it with you guys. So I ordered a larger package of them on Amazon and I was able to just get it um, a free shipping. It came in like the next day and it's perfect. I actually, my mother-in-law wanted some of these for the kitchen. So I'm giving her some for the kitchen. Plus I have extra for more crafts in the future. So it just worked out better. You're gonna to want to cut these into 12 inch long rectangles and then measure how wide your wooden square is and then basically cut the plastic sheet to be a half an inch smaller. So you basically want to give yourself a quarter inch of space on either side because we're gonna need this to fit a little bit in, um, not right out on the very edge. So if your wooden square is five and a half inches wide, go ahead and just make your plastic sheet be five inches. You wanna just shorten it up by a half an inch on the width, make it 12 inches tall, the same the same height that those wooden dowels are gonna be. I actually used a paper cutter. You could do this with scissors, but I just felt like it gave a much cleaner, straighter line, and it was just a lot neater to do this way. Now, for the larger lantern, I needed two cutting boards and then for the smaller one I just needed one of them. I feel like this craft is a little bit trickier to explain so bear with me here but now I'm adding some high heat hot glue and this smaller glue gun worked so well to keep the glue gun lines like to keep the glue very neat and not have extra glue just kind of going everywhere but it is a high heat glue gun so it worked out really nicely to just help that plastic really adhere onto the wood. I pressed it together tightly. So take your two wooden dowels and we're basically gluing them at, at either end of the, the long sides of these plastic sheets that we cut out. Hopefully you're able to see what I'm doing and this all makes sense for you, but we're making four sets. So you'll have four pieces of plastic, one for each side of the lantern, and then you should have kind of like a wooden dowel on each end of those plastic sheets. And like I said, hopefully that all makes sense. I did use wood glue on the bottom of each of the wooden dowels where I glue it on to the wooden square. And then I went along with hot glue kind of on the inside portion of the plastic sheet so that that would also just kind of seal it in and line it up clean and neat and help hold it in place while the wood glue on the wooden dowel part is drying. The hot glue along the inside portion of that plastic cutting board mat, it will just help it stay in place there because the glue, the hot glue will dry much faster than the wood glue would have. 
And then also as you add your other sides in, you can go down the inside corner and where those two wooden dowels are coming, you know, side to side, coming up against each other, you can go ahead and run down that seam in there on the inside with a little bit of hot glue, um, at least until you get to the last piece. When you get to the last piece, you probably won't be able to fit your hand and glue gun down in there and all that, but at least on the first view, just to kind of give it a really good seal and help hold everything together nice and tight. And then for the top, don't glue your top piece on. We're just going to set ours on. It's not going to be like a, a true lantern in that sense, I guess. But what I really like about it is the fact that you can obviously only use LED candles in here, but it's very going to be very easy to lift the lid up to take out your candle and change the batteries on your battery operated LED candle. Again, do not use real candles in here. Do not. This is for fake candles only. So I'm going to link some of my favorite battery LED battery candles down below in the description box. I get them on Amazon, but um, Dollar Tree does carry uh, some battery candles as well. I wanted to kind of add the little top accent and I just glued together four of the wooden Jenga block pieces and then I stained them and glued them on top of the lantern and it's perfect because it gives you something to grab to easily lift off your lantern top change the batteries or put in your battery candles or whatever you want to do, turn them on, set them on timers if you want, and then just kind of set the lid back on the top. It's just a beautiful piece of decor and it's going to look really great for any season. So I think this West Elm DIY turned out really nice for all in all really costing me maybe around the $5 mark. For the next one, we're going to do a little bit of a planter DIY, and I'm taking um, three of these wreath forms. I would actually recommend you guys just use two. I glued three of them together and then ended up kind of regretting it, and it was too late. They're very tightly stuck together with the hot glue. I had pressed them together so well. This glue gun I'm using is also high heat, so when you press the styrofoam together, like it really adhered nice and strong, and it was just too difficult to take it apart and just have two but I'm taking one of these plastic buckets I think it's technically a trash pail from Dollar Tree and I just pressed those wreath forms all the way up added some white paint on here and then I also took some dirt from outside so we've got like a very sandy soil here and I wanted to kind of rub that on and give it some texture now actually the sand was kind of wet because we had had some rain last night so unfortunately it went on and it made this planter look instead of looking like sandy and gritty and giving it texture I feel like it actually mixed with the paint a little bit and it almost gave it more of a gray look like cement or concrete which ended up being really interesting. It wasn't quite the original look I was going for. If you want more of that gritty um, textured look, you might want to actually just pick up a bag of the white sand that Dollar Tree carries and then you could mix that and add it on top of your paint and really get more of like a, a textured grit to the paint and it will give you some texture to your planter, but you can always go outside like I did, just get some soil or even some beach sand would work and you can mix that in and just give yourself a nice, interesting color and design here and then go ahead and seal it with some Mod Podge, especially if you wanna use this out on like your deck or your patio. I do recommend using it in a covered place um, just cause I don't think it's like completely waterproof sealed, but in case you're worried about it getting a little bit damp outside, just do your best to seal it with like the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And if you want it to drain, you can drill some drainage holes in the bottom. This one cost me again, just about the $5 mark to make this DIY as well. Now, one more West Elm DIY. For this next one, I'm taking four of those blocks and glue the two of them together on each side, and those are going to be the sides for this planter. And then for the base, we're gonna go ahead and make it out of the Tumbling Tower game blocks. So I glued six across in a row, and then two more stacked up 
um, side by side underneath and tried to give myself kind of like a, a square base here. Basically, you want the base to be large enough to fit one of the glass vases from Dollar Tree using 10 wooden Jenga blocks. Go ahead and glue your two sets of the wooden rectangles onto the sides of them and they, you know, create these two vertical pieces and now we're going to connect those at the top by adding two more wooden Jenga blocks glued end to end and those will fit perfectly in between glue them together and they just add a nice decorative accent I would recommend using like a dot of wood glue and then below it add a dot of hot glue that way you get some of each and the hot glue will give you that instant hold which is going to just hold everything in place while you give it a day or so for the wood glue to really cure and I think this is the perfect thing for adding in pretty flowers but my favorite thing to do is to cut clippings from pothos plants as well as my lemon lime maranta or otherwise known as a prayer plant can also cut the pieces off of these and they will create roots and then you'll be able to once they root in the water you can take them and plant them in new pots and propagate your plants this way I love to do this I think mine turned out looking really nice compared to the West Elm one as well all for um, just a about how much did we spend? Roughly again around five dollars ish or so uh, to make this one. Maybe six dollars with the glass vase but if you've already got a glass cup or something you could use that. We're taking some of these removable sticker tile decals from Dollar Tree along with a pack of these little wooden squares but I believe it was either four or six for a dollar twenty-five. We're going to make some coasters out of these simply by covering them with a piece of the tile sticker. You could get more than one out of the tile decal. You'll just need to use two pieces to do that, which worked for me. I just recommend lining up, you know, if you have one like this that has lines, line up the lines so that you know it all looks like one seamless piece you could paint the back or you can just do what i'm doing here rubbing a little antique wax on there or if you have a little bit of wood stain and then once that is all dry cover the entire thing with some dishwasher safe mod podge and that'll just make this pretty waterproof now once it's completely dry add some little rubber sticker feet on the bottom and you're good to go. I think these would be adorable as a gift idea. Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day is coming up, and they make a really cute piece of home decor. And of course Dollar Tree does have lots of tile stickers. Dollar Tree also has some cork foam stickers, which I could not find, but that would make a really nice bottom side for your coaster if you didn't want to use the little rubber stickers i will leave a link for those down below if you're looking to buy the little rubber stickers for the feet that i used they just stick on press them on really good and then they're just perfect so that your coaster doesn't scratch the table and it doesn't slide around let's go ahead and move on now to the next one so we're taking a toy elephant from dollar tree along with this little cement block so i took off the little metal cage that was on the top i guess it was supposed to be like like a little like vase or candle holder situation and we are going to basically flip over that cement piece I spray painted the whole thing gold and I wanted to test that out and it completely worked so this metallic gold spray paint adhered just fine onto the cement and then also onto the plastic elephant let these completely dry and then we're going to glue the feet of the elephant right there onto that cement block and that way it's heavy and sturdy enough that it can hold up a couple of books you can totally make more than one of these if you want them on either end of your books for the next one, I'm taking one of these cylinder vases from Dollar Tree along with some of this frosted window film. So this might be a new item. I'm not sure. Let me know. Have you guys seen the frosted window film before in a Dollar Tree near you? Cut out a piece and wrap it around our glass cylinder vase and basically get like a frosted glass vase. It looks so pretty and this is just perfect as is now to use either as a vase or as a candle holder. We're taking another one of those little cement blocks that comes with the little gold topper frame here. I don't even know what you technically call this piece, but 
we're going to spray the entire thing gold. Here you go with a lovely vase or candle holder that is just gonna be perfect to style in your home decor. For the next one, Dollar Tree has some of these glass jars and I love it because the tops twist on so you could also put food in here. Let's go ahead and decorate them a little bit using these glass stickers. So I've seen these in Dollar Tree for a long time and I've always wanted to use them for something and I've had a lot of ideas but never actually got around to using them so today we are adding some onto the jars so I have a large jar and a small jar and for the large one I added some on the, around the bottom and the top and then for the smaller jar I added a row uh, or a band of these gray stickers around the center and then I wanted to decorate them a little bit because the stickers are silver which is perfect because it matches with that silver top however we do also have we have some silver but we also have some gold in our decor and some wood as well so I thought that adding a little bit of a gold color would just make this fit and blend in better with our decor so I'm using a little bit of fabric paint to just decorate and embellish and bring out some of the pattern that's on here just to kind of highlight the pattern that's on those silver stickers and here is how these turned out I have them up on my floating shelves here but obviously you can use these in your pantry for organization or even you know in your bathroom bathroom or laundry room, laundry supplies and accessories and things like that. So let me know what would you use these jars for. Now for the next DIY, I am going to make a tray here using one of these charger plates from the Dollar Tree. And I love to use the charger plate for this because it is pretty wide. So it's gonna give me a nice size little tray that I can put on my coffee table. And it's perfect because I don't have a huge coffee table. So it's really the perfect size tray. I love how sturdy the charger plate is. And I started in the center with some nautical rope and just glued it all the way around and filled in the entire tray tray around and around and around <laughs> and then I took the rope a little bit down the the side underneath as well not all the way completely underneath but a little bit down the edges so you don't really see at all um, underneath it's just completely covered and then it's totally up to you but I like to sometimes burn the edges off with a lighter because sometimes there's a lot of like frayed fiber edges sticking up and it, and it just looks really messy and not like a neat smooth tray so I burn those off with a lighter and now it just looks so neat and smooth it's really perfect for postal decor farmhouse decor definitely will also fit in with um, more like like a boho decor. It's a very versatile tray and I love having it styled here on our coffee table. Now I'm gonna take this ceramic bowl from Dollar Tree and I wanted to add some texture. So I'm hot gluing on this wide pearl ribbon around the bowl and then I'm gonna sponge a thick layer of chalk paint over the whole thing. So that helps hold down that ribbon and keep everything in place and it, I just fully covered it so that the whole thing looks more um, just even I guess and it doesn't look like there's a ribbon attached you really just see that there's like these raised bumps as like a border around the center of the bowl so I think it turned out really cool we're gonna make a planter out of this one as well now I'm gonna go ahead and arrange a grouping of these wooden rounds as the base just make sure that you do your best to get them in as even in height as you can so for me I found that some were a little bit shorter some were a little bit taller and I tried to pick out the ones that were closest in height add a general amount of hot glue on top of all of those wooden pieces and you can place your bowl right on top of that. I decided to finish this one off by brushing on a bit of metallic gold paint around the top edge as well as a light coat of it over the wooden base. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put the gold over the top of the wood but I felt like it kind of tied it in better if I had a little bit of gold on the bottom to kind of match the top part. And the gold is actually pretty transparent when you do it lightly, so you can still totally see the wood. It's just got a light golden glimmer to it. So we have a cute little planter here for some succulents, be that real or fake. And it could be filled with some grapevine balls and just used as like a decor piece. You know, it's totally up to you.
Moving on, we're going to make a simple tiered tray using this pack with one large and one small stovetop covers from the dollar store. Turn these upside down, glue a glass candle holder in between, and you can leave it just like this. But for mine, I decided to now paint the glass riser part in the center with some metallic copper paint and then use a couple of the wooden snakes from Dollar Tree that they have in the toy section. And actually, I'm not sure if they're currently in the toy section or in the craft section you guys let me know down below if you've seen them recently where they were um i can't i can't remember where i saw them recently but anyway i glued those around the edges of the tray to finish them off of course i did remove the head and tail part and cut the wooden pieces down so that they fit so one little trick for me is rather than cutting this way down into the groove i found this to be a little bit harder than cutting this way letting the scissors like go into the groove and then cutting that that line of whatever they hold all the wood together with this way actually seemed to be a little easier they're both they're both a little bit tricky, but that's just what seemed to be a little bit easier but, for me. And this was really easy to do, and I just think that it added a really unique finish to the tray. And then you can also paint or stain the wooden border now if you would like to, or you can just simply leave the wood natural. Completely up to you. For the next one, I wanted to create kind of a decorative pedestal dish. So to start, we're taking one of these wire plant hanger baskets from Dollar Tree, and I just used some wire cutters to trim off the hooks as best I could that are on the top there, and then I painted this over with chalk paint. Honestly, in hindsight, I think I should have just done spray paint. It would have been a smoother finish, and I just I feel like it would have looked better overall. So spray paint is my recommendation, but you know, work with what you have. You can place this on top of one of these little candle holders from Dollar Tree, and I think it made a really cool pedestal dish. Of course, definitely use a bunch of hot glue if you want to really like attach that on there, but you don't even really need to if you're just going to set this up on a shelf. You can grab some of these foam balls from Dollar Tree in their toy section, and as long as you position them so that those seams in the foam ball are not showing these actually look really cool you could also get some foam balls and then cover them in thumbtacks just like overlap all the thumbtacks as you go we used a few boxes of gold tacks from dollar tree in order to do this i think this also looks really beautiful Anyway, the next one is a vase now inspired by this one that I saw in at home. And all you need is a Dollar Tree vase and some spray paint. I did the top half in white. And then once that was pretty much dry, I came back and did the lower half in gold. And the best part about this is that you actually want the, the gold part to come up and overlap a little bit on top of the white. So a little bit of overspray there is perfect. That's how you're going to get this look. So it's insanely easy to do it has to be one of the easiest diy decor pieces you could ever make and i love how it turned out I took this glass vase from dollar tree along with some of these little beaded pearl stickers i'm just going to cut off little um, long strips of these little pearl stickers. They have an adhesive on the back. I cut these out and I started with pieces of nine little pearls above that one or below, I guess, depending. I have the vase upside down here. So below it, I did five more little pearls and just space those in between. Basically, just I cut different amounts and then kind of staggered them. Once the stickers are on, I spray painted the entire thing on here with some smoky beige spray paint i think it was like in a satin finish and i think this turned out really neat looking it's so perfect for me to pop a plant down inside of it and that way it actually catches any water runoff you could definitely add fresh flowers in here that would be beautiful now let's go ahead and move on to the next one and for this one I'm taking a planter from Dollar Tree along with a bunch of these little wooden Jenga pieces. So the little blocks I'm gluing on here kind of sideways, like lengthwise all the way around. Once they're all glued on, I'm going to go ahead and 
paint some of these blocks. So one option would be to just kind of take like a glossy Mod Podge and just paint it with that. So you just get like a shiny clear finish. You could also use a wood stain and just do the whole thing just with a natural wood stain. I'm gonna use some white chalk paint along with some metallic copper chalk paint. I painted over the bottom of the planter with the metallic copper. And then I'm basically like alternating. I'm gonna do three different colors. So some of them will be the metallic copper chalk paint. Thinned my chalk paint out with some water, brushed that on there. So I did some with the white chalk paint. And you guys can see that the white chalk paint I did is pretty light. So because I diluted it with water, it's light enough that you can still see a little bit of the wood grain through it and that's kind of the look that I was going for was not a completely solid opaque white but a little bit more of a transparent white so that you can still see some of that wood grain underneath. Once these have all dried I would come back and brush the remaining ones with the same um, diluted white chalk paint and while they're wet I decided to sprinkle on some espresso powder so I feel like it's, it sounds like it's such a waste but anyway this is my very favorite espresso coffee powder ever unfortunately I ordered it online and when it came in in the mail I opened up the package and it turns out that the coffee package had already been opened like the seal on it was already open so I decided not to actually drink this coffee powder and I would just just end up using it for my craft supplies so I didn't have to throw it away. For this planter, because I left the bottom drip pan on and I already attached the wooden blocks like all the way down onto it, so I had this other um, little dish, also this little planter from Dollar Tree that fits really nicely inside the red one and I feel like the color matches really nicely. So let's just add some holes right into it into this one. I think that's small enough. I have a little too big of a drill bit. Um, Mike and I were looking and we couldn't find our smaller one. So I think, I think that's gonna be sufficient. I don't want too much dirt falling out of here. So we're just gonna pop this right back in here and then we'll put our dirt and then get our, our plant in there. I wanted to get some new plants to put in these vases that we are making today and to fill our new planters. So Kylie and I went to Home Depot and picked out a few things, found some smaller size plants. It's definitely more affordable if you can pick an easy to grow plant and then just get it in a smaller size, even something like a pothos plant which i'm going to show you later in this video they can be much more affordable when you get them a little bit on the smaller size and they grow incredibly fast and in my experience they are a pretty low light plant and they just gr grow super well like you even if you forget to water them they can just do well and grow incredibly fast like i said so really easy to maintain and really affordable and they make such a beautiful statement piece so let's go ahead and jump right in with these painted glass DIYs. So I found this glass jar with the little um, glass stopper lid in the top um, at Dollar Tree and I thought it was so pretty and I've been using it for a while just like that. I've used it as a vase, I've used it as decor, but I decided that I wanted to see if I could kind of paint it and change the color. I'm going to be taking some Elmer's clear glue and putting in a drop of some food coloring and I went with the pink one and look how bright this looks. It really looks like a beautiful bright fuchsia or magenta color. You just paint that all over and then kind of set it upside down and let it dry. Be careful when you're doing this. You want to maybe put it on a plate or something disposable and make sure that you just protect your work surface. But a lot of the glue is going to drip and run off. So when it's dry, you're going to be left with these beautiful beautiful colored glass. It's very like transparent or translucent and I just love the effect and you can do this in any color to match your decor. I actually did an, like this little vase here that I have my dried florals in along with this pink decorative glass. Now, I want to also do some glass candle holders from Dollar Tree and they had these little votive holders which I got seven of them, I believe. 
and then we glued them together using some E6000 glue, which is just a great, I think it's an epoxy glue. It's really good for holding things like glass to get a better hold than hot glue. So you can totally do this with hot glue. Just, you know, be aware that hot glue doesn't stay together quite as well, but it's perfect if you plan to take apart your glass DIYs later. You'll be able to kind of get them apart if you do it with hot glue, but I wanted to actually make these more stable and secure for long-term use, so I went ahead and did this with the E6000. We've glued together this seam right here, and then right here we set one of these upside down and put the glue right here on this part and set it right down inside of this one. And then the last part is gonna to be to put this right up on the top here, so one will be a little bit taller than the other. And then I'm gonna paint them basically the same way, adding this food coloring into the Elmer's clear glue. And I did the pink one, and then I also did the blue, which I, it was kind of, I was kind of hoping for a little bit of a greener color, so I added in a splash of that yellowy orange, and it overall came out kind of a bit of a turquoise color. It's not quite as green as I was hoping. It's a little bit more blue. Set these aside to dry, and they you might want to leave them for a day, leave them overnight or whatever, especially depending on how humid it is where you are. We're in Florida, and it is a little bit more on the humid side, so most things that I'm painting take a little bit longer to dry than if you're somewhere where perhaps you have the heat on in a in a colder climate you might have less moisture in the air and your product your paintings or whatever you're working on will dry a lot faster. I'm gonna add in some of these LED taper candles. I think these are really pretty but of course even Dollar Tree has taper candles now and I saw them in a couple different colors there as well. I'll link the ones that I'm using down below and this is so easy and affordable just using glue and and food coloring. Moving on for the next one, I'm taking four of these wooden boards from Dollar Tree and gluing them together with hot glue. And then I took one of the little wooden snake toys from Dollar Tree, just make four pieces that all are the same length. I used to cut these with scissors and it can be a little bit tricky. And then I realized that if I just took a knife and carefully like sliced it nice and neat, it actually works a lot better, easier, quicker, faster. So I now just slice those with a knife, get a nice clean cut, glue them on. And they make these cute little riser like feet for this wooden riser. So you could put a candle on here. I'm just putting a little plant here. I got this vase in Goodwill and I have some of this little boxwood greenery, super cute. Um, on my bookshelf here. Now for the next one, for this one, I took the pink, I did some little flowers here and added some leaves and just had fun decorating this. I was so inspired doing this little artwork here and painting on my glass. I cannot wait to use it. It looks so tropical and so fun for spring and summer. I'm just loving the bright colors and definitely can't wait to add this to my glass drinkware collection. It's just turning out so pretty. But Basically for the flowers, you can kind of um, push a little bit of paint up for the top of your petal and then drag it down quickly in toward the center and it makes kind of this little swipe of paint and just like a little swoosh of paint and that's like one petal and I did five petals like that per flower just kind of pulling the little, the little paint swishes in toward the center. I hope that kind of makes sense. You're going to want to let these dry before you add any kind of center to your flower, which I came back and added a little bit of orange in there with the end of a toothpick and just kind of brush that in a little bit. You can also add in a little bit of yellow or some of the gold or maybe even a little bit of white paint and just kind of break it up, add a little bit of interest to the center of your flower. And then for the leaves also, I kind of did a similar um, swish idea with the paintbrush. And for this one, I kind of flattened the brush and kind of twisted it to kind of make a little swish like a, a fan like a half circle and then from there um, turned the brush on an angle and dragged out the rest of that swish to a point. Once this is all finished being painted, set it aside to dry, and then basically we're going to let these cure in the oven. We put them into a cold oven, set it for 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then let them bake there for 30 minutes, and then set them aside to cool. 
So here's how our glassware looks right out of the oven. It looks super good. Everything is hardened and dried on there. I just adore this tropical one. I think it turned out so pretty. And now for this one, I'm taking a bunch of these circle styrofoam, I guess they're like wreath forms, and then just glued them all together with a little bit of hot glue, stacking them one on top of the other. Now you can kind of make this as high as you want to. Now I'm gonna paint over the whole thing with some white chalk paint and that's gonna give us a base. And then we're going to come back and spray paint that with kind of a stone textured finish. I'm gonna try to link everything that I can either down below or in my Amazon storefront under my craft supply section. So hopefully you can find stuff. Otherwise, feel free to Google anything that I mention in here and you can find it online. Home Depot definitely carries the sprays that I used for this particular planter. And I do recommend painting it with a chalk paint first because a lot of times painting with spray paint, it will kind of eat into the styrofoam and I wasn't sure if that was gonna happen. Sometimes I use spray paint on styrofoam and it works out and other times it just starts to disintegrate and the stone texture one that I'm gonna use actually doesn't have a base color. You're basically just spraying on the textured finish. So you definitely wanna pick a color to put underneath that. Now, I also made a little bottom portion for it, taking one of the little garden saucer trays from Dollar Tree. And that's really cool. It's gonna be the perfect water catcher for our plant to run into. And it actually fits really perfectly underneath this tower of circles and it kind of completes the bottom. It just gives it a little more rounded finish on the bottom and makes it look like a complete unit. So I, I love how this turned out. And then the perfect thing is popping in a little plant in the top. So I've got this plant here. This is the Paphos plant I was telling you about, and it's so beautiful. This planter fits right into the top of these styrofoam wreath forms. So you can just set it in there and any runoff will just catch in that tray underneath. And it's great because the pothos plant will grow and it will begin to flow and hang down and cascade down onto the floor. It's just gonna be so lovely. So I cannot wait for this little plant to start growing. Let's go ahead now and move on. I took one of these little metal farmhouse type planters from Dollar Tree. I've got some of this cotton nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I actually took the three strands apart because it's kind of twisted together. I took them apart into the three individual strands strands so that I could then braid them and you'll see I had to kind of connect a couple pieces together because I used one whole piece I think they're like nine feet long or so and then I had a portion of one left and it was not enough to finish so basically if you just get two two bunches of the rope that should be the perfect amount i braided those went all the way around gluing my braid onto the planter and then i also came back took a little more rope for the handles and just took one strand out of the three that are twisted together in the rope took one strand and i did them around the handles to give them the same like cotton weave rope look glued that on there. I also made a little tassel with another piece out of it, did a tassel on each side, and then just combed out all of the fringe. If your fringe is not hanging flat or straight, just wet it and then comb through and it should hang pretty nicely. And then you can leave it like this or if you want to finish it up, I ended up adding a nice little gold border on here. I took some of this ribbon that I had and cut the little metallic gold wire trim off of the edge and actually just hot glued that on toward the bottom and made a nice little accent around the lower part of this vase. So it's got like a little metallic gold accent with the tassels. I feel like it's just really pretty and unique. Definitely a lovely modern boho planter decor piece. And this plant I've actually had for maybe two years now. I've had it a while, but decided to stick it in here and use my little planter that we just made to catch any of the water runoff and i love how this looks this one is a set of candle holders and i just found these orbs these geometric orbs in dollar tree i thought they were really cool and i just knew right away that i wanted to make some candle holders with them so i used super glue to attach them although hot glue should also work you could use e6000 um, a lot of options here 
and I glued together to make a little set. One of them two high and one set with three high. Definitely make sure that these are really dry and that your glues definitely had a chance to dry thoroughly. And then you can go ahead and paint them however you like. But first, I want to go ahead and use two lids from these round cardboard boxes from Dollar Tree's craft section. These are very sturdy, but because they are just a like papery cardboard material, you'll only really want to use these with battery flameless like LED battery candles, which is what I'm planning to do. I love my LED battery operated timer candles. I love the fact that they're on a timer. They flicker very realistically and I'm actually going to give away a set of them later in this video. So keep watching and I will tell you how to enter if you would like to enter to win a set of those candles. But anyway, you can paint these now however you like. So here is how they look if you just leave them completely natural but I'm going to use some chalk paint and completely cover these entire candle holders. I love how they look um, all covered over just with some white chalk paint, but you could also lightly kind of stipple on some brown or some gray paint to make this look more like actual stone. If you like the look of that, comment below. Would you keep these a solid color? Would you, would you make them a solid color or do you think that they should be more dimensional something with like two or three colors kind of splotched on there and layered on there to look more like stone or yeah would you do a solid color what would be your preference Let's go ahead and move on. And next I'm taking two Dollar Tree canvases. I have an eight by 10 and an 11 by 14 here. And I'm going to cut out a fabric placemat. This is also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut that to fit on the 11 by 14 canvas and use hot glue to attach it. And then for the 8x10 frame, so I started with the shorter side on top, so it's kind of going lengthwise vertically, and I poured some liquid gold acrylic paint along that narrower side at the top, and I just let that gold paint drip all the way down. So I thought this looks really cool. Now, this is totally optional, and if you skip this part, your piece of wall art decor will still be beautiful, and it will be less expensive and easier to do but I was just really curious to see how this would look. I just kind of had this idea to make it a little bit more like 3D, I guess, just, just to give it something with a little bit more like layered textures and interest. So once that paint was dry, I just stuck on some of these Dollar Tree wall stickers. Now these ones say, let go and let God. And like I said, I picked them up in Dollar Tree, but to be honest, they would be easier to read if I didn't add the gold paint on there, but I do think that the paint just kind of gives it a unique and artistic vibe. You could use black paint on here on top of the white canvas. I think that would be really pretty. You could also use, you know, any color that would fit with your decor. I would just suggest like pick a paint color that will complement the color of the placemat that you use for the canvas. So yeah, anyway, glue that piece onto the larger piece that has your placemat, that fabric on there. And then I added a simple frame from Dollar Tree. I'm just using one of their 11 by 14 frames and I'm gonna save the class for a future project. You can paint the frame if you want or keep it as is. I think Dollar Tree has black and brown frames frames that come in that 11 by 14 size. I think this one turned out pretty fun and kind of funky looking with the gold 
drips even if it is a little bit harder to read i do really love how it turned out so moving on to the next one taking a glass vase from the dollar tree the stickers are such a pain to get off so i recommend if you just soak them for like five minutes in some cold water the stickers wipe right off it's amazing just try it this is just so much better than trying to peel the stickers off soak it in the water and they wipe right off i'm gonna spray paint it with this kind of tan color that i have and i also picked up some of these little mini flower pots from the Dollar Tree. I also picked up some of these iron-on transfers and this is where the project will get a little bit interesting. I thought that these gold flower designs were so pretty and I wanted to try to use them for something. T to be honest, I think when I picked them up, I don't know if I noticed that they were um, iron-on and not rub-on transfers. So I cut out each piece once my little planter was dry and I had my iron on kind of like a low to medium setting and wear gloves if you need to do this don't let your kids do this you have to be super safe and careful doing it however it worked so I want to share it with you guys because I do really like how mine turned out just to kind of give you an idea and you'll just have to kind of keep in mind and see if this is gonna work for you or not but the iron actually worked really well I just needed to press it down for like maybe 15 seconds or so just gently kind of rubbing it on top of the little transfer there and then I took the iron off of it and took paper towel and just finished like rubbing it the rest of the way just to make sure it dried and stuck on there and adhered well and then I was able to pull off the little backing and for the most part they worked out really well I know the intended use is doing this on fabric so you're much better off if you can just find some rub on transfers in Dollar Tree but since I only had the iron on, I decided to give it a try. All in all, it worked out pretty well. I'm gonna put a little potted plant inside of it and use this as a little decorative vase. So let's add some feet on the bottom. It's your choice if you wanna paint them or not, but those little flower pots, we're gonna flip three of them upside down and glue them on here and make some legs for our planter. I actually wanted to stain the little planter legs and I just mixed in a little bit of this brown acrylic paint in with some water and basically created my own little wood stain just to give them a little bit of color and look how cute this turned out i did use a good bit of glue um, on the inside like around the top of those flower pots to use them for the feet but it came out super cute now for the next one we're going to go ahead and take three of those same round glass fish bowls from dollar tree same thing soak off your little stickers from the bottom so i actually forgot to record the part where i glued three of these vases together with some e6000 glue you could do it with hot glue if you want but definitely something stronger like e6000 is going to give you a much better hold once that was dry you want to let it cure for at least 24 hours i actually left mine for a few days and then i painted it over with some white paint i used um, chalk paint and then i came in with this fast dry lightweight spackle and covered the entire thing and then let that dry for another 24 hours and once it was fully dry i was able to just kind of sand it all down use some sandpaper or whatever you have i actually just had one of these little like pedicure scrubby things i had some extra ones laying around so i used that but Use some sandpaper, just kind of lightly sand it down, get it smooth, and then you can go ahead and coat the whole thing over with some Mod Podge if you want to seal it on there. I actually used a waterproof sealer, the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge, just to give it like, you know, more of a waterproof seal. And I'm going to use this to put one of my plants in here and just let it be a water catcher, but it would also be just beautiful also as a piece of decor on a bookshelf or something like that. Moving on for the next one, I'm taking one of these clear vases from the Dollar Tree, one of these cylinder vases, and they also have this metal ribbon, which is really cool. So they had it in a few different varieties. I'm showing you guys two of the styles that they had here. And I'm using a bit of glue to glue this metal ribbon on around the base of that cylinder vase. Now I did three of them high, totally up to you how many you want to do. I do recommend that you kind of spread your hot glue out so it's not all in one thick strip of glue because you don't want a lot of the glue coming through the metal ribbon there. You want it to kind of 
be pretty, uh, you know, like as flat behind the metal ribbon as possible. And then once I got that on there, I spray painted the whole thing white and then came in and touched it up and decorated it and embellished my planter vase here with some gold fabric paint. The puffy paint is just so easy to work with. However you want to do it will work. I add some flowers in here and here is how this beautiful DIY vase turned out. Now for the next one, we have a cheese ball container here out of the recycle bin to recycle. If you don't eat cheese balls, you can potentially get one of these from a friend, a family member, a neighbor, maybe someone else who eats them. Ask them to save their recycle for you. Peel the sticker off of here. It was a little bit challenging. If you have trouble getting off all the glue residue, you can always use a little bit of the glue gone to get that off, which Dollar Tree does sell as well. However, I was pretty much able to get the majority of mine off just using some plain old soap and water and my scrub daddy sponge. So got all of that off and once it was dry, I decided to spray paint mine with some gloss white indoor outdoor spray paint and then I also let that dry and then I felt like it needed a little something else. So I took some gold acrylic paint, painted that on a little ring around the top and the bottom just to kind of bring it out and accent it a little bit. We popped some Spanish lavender in here. Don't forget to drill your holes in the bottom and you can also add in some rocks for drainage, but this would also be really nice if you wanted to add in some herbs. Now we're moving on for the next one. I love this one. It's so easy and really super cheap and affordable. And I love how it turned out. I have these by our front door. So I picked up two of these black bowls from Dollar Tree along with two of these planters as well. And the black and the copper, I just felt like it kind of coordinated well together. It was a starting to do multiple holes and then I realized that the thing that made the most sense was to kind of do like one large hole in the middle of this and then one large hole in the middle of that black and copper one and then line those two holes up together and use a very generous amount of hot glue. I use the hot glue and mine are working but like I said I used it on high heat and I did use a generous amount of hot glue around the edges there to really and I pressed them together really really well until the glue is dry so mine seemed to be holding together great and then I added a little bit of rocks in the bottom just to make sure that the water could drain out without all of the soil like either packing and clogging the drain hole or although soil all just rinsing out the bottom every time I water my plants. These are really great for a deck, a patio, or even like front door, home decor for spring and summer. These are just a beautiful addition and I love how they dress up the space. And of course you can totally customize it with whatever kind of colors you do. And if you want to, you can always spray paint these if you want them to be a different color. Now moving on for the next one, I'm taking one of these little cardboard cylinder boxes and just remove the lid. For now, we're going to take a little bit of this adhesive pearl wrap, also from Dollar Tree, and cut this off. It's like a nice big sticker sheet. You can just use it to completely wrap the outside of this little box. and. Then go ahead and coat the whole thing with some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. It just gives it like a nice waterproof protection and you can go ahead and do two or three coats if you want to. We're going to turn this into a little bit of a planter but for an air plant so we're not going to need to actually water the plant that's in here. We're simply going to need to just like mist it with some water and just basically yeah you just mist water on an air plant. Let me know down below, have you guys ever had an air plant before? Do you like air plants? I was actually able to pick up some locally here because we are in Florida, but you can definitely order some on Amazon and you can also get them, I believe in like Home Depot or Lowe's as well. Um, and I, maybe even on Etsy. Air plants are just really fun because if you kind of forget to take care of your plants, all you need to do is mist them with a little bit of water occasionally and that's all there is to it. I put some rocks in here to basically just give us a, a place to put my air plant, kind of anchor it in and hold it 
it there um, and stand it up on. Now you can use the lid as a little riser if you want to. Just gives it a nice pretty look, but I think it looks really pretty with or without using the lid underneath. Just a little different texture and interest. Be sure to let me know down below which one of these planters was your personal favorite and if you think you might recreate any of these. For the next DIY, we're gonna do a summer wreath. This is very Hawaiian and tropical looking and it's also extremely affordable. It is an under $5 DIY using simply a wreath form from Dollar Tree and then three of these hibiscus garlands. So I got a pink, orange, and yellow and I just used a little bit of floral wire to kind of twist them and tie them on here rather than wrapping them around because I didn't want to waste any of the, the leaves and the flowers on the back side of the wreath so this way I could just keep it all on the front and maximize my coverage. If you have a few extra garlands, then you could go just wrap it all the way around the wreath. You don't really have to tie it on. And if you don't have floral wire, you could possibly use something like a pipe cleaner or even some little wires off of your bread tie if you have uh, bread bags, the little ties on there should work as well. And here is how this one turned out. Now this one is again using another one of these rectangle signs with the wooden edge. I had a piece of marble paper and so I'm going to cut that out and stick that in there and make a little tray here, stick the marble paper down inside the frame and then I added these little table tennis balls from the toy section in Dollar Tree and gl hot glued those on like little feet, little pedestal riser feet for our tray love how this one turned out i love the colors i think it looks so pretty obviously because this is like a paper lined tray you don't want this tray getting wet but you could use it to put jewelry or rings on to style some decor you could place like your led battery candles on here and it's really cute and just an adorable little piece of decor and for this one i'm gonna actually pull it apart and i'm just going to use two pieces from the frame. I'm gonna use the two shorter ones, but I'm definitely saving the longer ones for another DIY that I have in mind in the future. I used some scissors to kind of pull out the little metal clasps, so I just have a smooth piece of wood now. All right, so again, I am taking three of the wooden square pencil holders, just mixed a little antique wax, in with some water and kind of created my own little DIY stain. You can obviously use any kind of wood stain. You can paint these. Um, you can also just mix some brown acrylic paint from Dollar Tree, mix it in with a little water and you'll have your own little DIY stain. So I just wanted to darken them just a touch. I basically wanted them to match the coloring of the wood that was already on those frames. Glue your three boxes together in a row and now I'm gonna take two of those little frames i'm using you can use the shorter or the longer end whatever works for you and take two of them and i'm going to glue them sticking up like a little triangle here so just a little hot glue on each end and then i added a little bit down in the center here and you can go ahead and fill these with any fall florals you can use fall leaves i mean you could fill them with pumpkins or whatever you like you can even use some stones down in there and then add some succulents in the top so really whatever you like i thought these looked really pretty and this kind of looks like a boho fall decor to me i, I feel like it looks kind of mid-century modern or boho um, i love the modern feel of this one DIY, which is a beautiful hand-painted glass this one is actually from Dollar Tree. It was something I saw, I think on Pinterest. It was, or maybe it was on Etsy. We're gonna do our best to kind of recreate that using this gold paint and also our glass paint. So the gold one, it will make a nice outline. We're gonna let that dry a few hours. I don't think you really have to let it dry overnight. A few hours should be fine. I did mostly let it dry overnight and then did most of the, um, the greens the next morning to fill it in and then you're going to want to let the whole thing sit for 24 hours before you put that into the oven to bake it and let it cure 
but you can also follow the directions, whatever's the directions on the paint that you're using. I will try to link the ones that I use down below if they are available, but I love how pretty this turned out. It's so fun for spring or summer, and I think it would rate, make a really great gift idea, even for like Mother's Day or Father's Day, or even like a birthday gift idea as well. Thank you all so much for watching. If you are still here, I love you guys. You are amazing. I can't believe you made it through such a long Dollar Tree DIY crafting decor video, but I wanted to do a little giveaway for you guys. So I have a couple of candles here. These are just a couple of the samples, but I figured since I had so many Dollar Tree DIY home decor crafts using these LED candles that I would do a giveaway. And I just want you to basically a, be subscribed to my channel here, Style My Sweets. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and then leave me any comment down below, just letting me know what candles that you would want to win. So I'll put some pictures on the screen here, but basically you can choose the little um, tea light candles, the votive candles come in a set that look like this. There's also um, the pillar candle set that's a trio. And oh, there's the taper candles, which we I also showed you guys, I think at some point. Um, there's the battery taper candles. And then also this one, the battery is not new. They're normally a bit brighter than this. Um, but these are the like more weatherproof one that you can put outside. They also come in a trio and a set of three. So. Anyway, let me know what set of candles that you would want to win and I will contact the winner and have that sent to you. I'll leave all the information for the giveaway down below in the description box. I'm just gonna be picking somebody just to say thank you. I just love and appreciate you guys for being here and supporting my channel. I'll see you guys soon in a new video. Bye.